welcome to Easier Said Than Done. I'm Kay Nowap, and I'll be your guide to plugins coding. If you're here, I'm assuming you've had little to no experience with Minecraft plugins coding. And that's okay. Everyone has to start somewhere. Anyways, for your benefit, I'll purposely be dumbing down everything I do as much as possible. Last thing I want is confusing code. Now I'm going to assume for this tutorial you've done three different things. The first thing you've done is download Eclipse. The second thing you've done is download the Java Development Kit from Oracle. And the last thing you've done is you've gotten a copy of a spigot or bucket jar file from spigotmc.org. Now in the interest of keeping these videos short, let's get right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is hit File, New, Java Project and then wait for this screen to come up. For the project name, we're going to be working with Annoying Diamonds today. Go ahead and call your plugin whatever you want, though. Go ahead and hit Finish, and it should pop up in your Package Explorer. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is create the actual package. So drop down your project file, hit the Source folder, and go back up to the top and hit New Java Package. Here, it's going to ask you for a name. Normally, I follow this pattern. I put down com, then I hit dot, I put down my username I use for everything, knowat, then I hit dot, and then I put down the name of my project, Annoying Diamonds. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit finish. It should create a package for you. Now we're going to build the main class. To do that, click on the package we just made, hit new Java class. Now I'm going to also call this Annoying Diamonds, since this is the main, the main class that we're using for our project. Go ahead and hit finish, and it'll create that as well. You'll be taken to this screen. Now there's a few things we're going to need to do before we can get to coding. Go back to your project, right click it, and find Build Path. Go down and hit Configure Build Path. You'll be taken to this screen. Go ahead and hit Add External Jars. Once you've done that, you'll be open a jar selection screen. Go ahead and find that server jar that we talked about earlier. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to use spigot 1.11. Go ahead and open it and hit OK. The last thing we need to do before we can start coding is actually add a plugin.yml file. To do that, right click your project again, hit New, File, choose your folder which is going to be your project folder, Annoying Diamonds, and then choose your file name, which is going to be plugin.yml. Hit finish, and a plugin.yml file will be created. If you get these annoying pop-ups, you can just close them. Within our plugin.yml, we'll need to create a few different things. The first one is a name. I'm going to name mine Annoying Diamonds. The second thing we need is a main class. Now the main class just tells the server what direction it needs to go to find your actual plugin. And quite simply, that's just going to be this package name and then the name of your actual main class. So in my case, it's com.knoapp.annoyingdiamonds.annoyingdiamonds. So again, package name, class name. The next thing we need is a version number. Go ahead and type version, colon, and then a version number. I'm going to just use 1.0. There are more things we can add to this plugin.yml class, but this is really all that's required. Go ahead and save that, and close it out. Now we're getting into actual coding. This very first part, you will not ever need to know what it does or why you need it. Eventually, you'll know why it's there, but there's no use in confusing yourself right now. So down in the description, I have a bit of text that you can just copy and paste. I'm going to do it really quickly on the screen in case you wanted to type it out. Basically, at the top, we're going to do extends, extends, and then Java plugin. Hit space, it'll turn red. You can go ahead and import it. The next thing we need is a public void on enable with an at override sign right above it. Override. Can't remember because they have two R's, that's what I'm missing. And then an at 
override public void on disable. Now I'm literally going to just copy in this next one because I never memorized what it actually is. This little segment of code is actually what lets us capture commands that are being run on the server. So I'm just going to copy that. Go ahead and copy it down in the description below if you haven't. And then make sure you add a return false. Go ahead and save that and you have the basic skeleton to your first plugin. Now in this next part, we're going to actually tell the server, hey, I want to know what's going on. Like, what's going on? Did Jimmy throw a snowball? Did Bobby take damage? You get what I'm going after. So to do that, we're going to go up to the on enable and we're going to write this line of code. This dot get server gets the server we're currently on dot get plugin manager gets the plugin manager dot register events and then this comma this. So basically we're saying, hey, I want to know what's going on in the server and I want you to tell this class what's going on in the server. Now it's going to give you an error and that's all right. Go to the very top and type in implements listener. So now we're actually writing in our code. Okay, we're listening for events now and the server is going to start telling us what's going on on the server. So now that we have that, we're going to actually get to some fun stuff. So we're going to work with something called an event now. Every event starts out with an at event handler. Right below it, we're going to put down public void, and then this part can literally be anything. It can be a bunch of just characters, and then an open bracket, and that's the very skeleton of it. In here is where we actually tell what event we're using. Now, for this one, since we're working with diamonds and we want to make them annoying, maybe like when they get clicked, we're going to work with the player interact event and then e so what we've just done is we've imported the event we've imported the event handler and we've taken this event and we've put all the information that goes with it like what's the player what's the item all that we just assigned it to the variable e now that we have that done we can get a few different things going the first thing Let's say I want to know which player has the actual diamond that just got right-clicked. Well, we can do that with player p equals e dot get player. Go ahead and put a semicolon right at the end. We'll have to import the player variable. Now what we've just done is we went from the event, we got the player, and we cast it to a variable. In this case, we're calling it P. So now, we know everything that's going on with the player. Where they are in the world, what they're holding in their inventory, um, who's near them, all assigned to this variable P. So, for this example, we need to check what they're holding in their hand. Now, to do that, we have to first make sure that they're not holding nothing in their hand, if that makes sense. So they have to be holding something. So, to check that, we're going to make an if statement. So if p dot get inventory, so now we know what they have in their inventory, dot get item in main hand. So now we know what they're holding in their main hand. See, we're getting more specific. Now we have to make sure it's an actual item. They're not holding like nothing in their hand. So if it e does not equal null, that's what the exclamation equals is that just means does not equal so if they are now holding an item in their hand we can actually figure out what that item is so go ahead and type item stack is equals p dot get inventory dot get item in main hand put a semicolon right there import your item stack now, the item stack is literally just an item. It could be a diamond, it could be a shovel, and that's all represented by IS. 
So now down below, we can check if it's an actual diamond. So if is.get type. What kind of item stack is it? Well, if it's a material diamond, then we know that the player in this event has just interacted with the diamond. Left click, right click, um, and the item in their hand is not null, so it actually exists, and the type is a diamond. So we know all that, now let's be annoying. Let's do p, which is the player, dot play sound. We get all these little args we have to fill. Arg stands for argument. So we need a location to play sound at. We can do that by getting where the player is at. So p dot get location. Whoa, what am I doing? Get location. Here we go. Choosing a sound from their list. So sound dot and then all of these sounds to choose. I like the ghast, because we want to be annoying. So maybe a scream. This first one is your volume. So 1F is a normal sound. This next one is your pitch. 1F is also a normal sound. The F just means float. Don't worry about that. It's literally just a number with an F next to it. Don't confuse yourself, it, it's fine. You can do decimals for this as well if you wanna change the pitch. Don't get confused by the F. Now, with this event, we're pretty much done. So let's go ahead and save it and see what happens. One more thing I forgot to mention. I'm gonna actually change this to something else. This was just to prove a point that you can literally put anything down. I'm gonna just call it on interact. Let's practice good code. I'm gonna save that. And now here's how we export it. Go up to the top, find your project, right click it, hit export. Now you're going to down drop this Java here, hit jar file, hit next. Now it's going to give you a location to save it to. So let's browse. I'm going to put in a finished projects folder. I'm going to call mine annoying diamonds. And I'm going to save that. And hit finish. It's just built our plugin. So now we can actually go test it. We have a plugin we can test. Now, a big bit of cross promotion here, as long as I'm making a video on coding. This is Diamond Fire. This is a server you can go to and snap blocks together to actually create code. And it doesn't require any Java knowledge or anything. You literally can make mini games out of thin air by slapping blocks together. It's a lot like Scratch. It's really helpful. I started there. So if you want to check out that server, the IP is right here. You can pause the video. I, I recommend it. It's really fun. Let's go test our plugin now. So now I'm on the server. I've got a few plugins loaded up and it stops lagging. Field test is a plugin I was just working on. It's Nothing special, bouncy arrows, you know, fun stuff like that. Annoying diamonds is what we care about. So if we remember our code, if we have a diamond, we either left or right click with it, we should see some fun stuff happen. Now that's annoying. So that's going to be end, the end of this plugin tutorial video. I hope everything worked out for you and I'll be sure to have more in the future. Thanks guys.